All right. So, Mr. Cruz. Yes, sir. I'm calling Mr. Cruz now because uh, I have followed this young man uh, since the beginning. <laughs> Ever since the beginning. I want to tell you it's an honor, first of all, to have you here in my home, Iron Addicts Gym, the Valley of the Beast. This is it. It is an honor for me to have you here. I remember Mr. Cruz from uh, T Money days. Yeah. A lot of these youngsters don't even because you said 17 years ago? 17 years ago. 17 Battle years Dome. ago, Battle Dome, T Money. <laughs> I didn't know who T Money was <laughs> at that time, but I found out T Money was whooping ass. Ooh. You hear me? Everything. T Money was the test. <laughs> T money was the test. They yes. make it, hey, you if you get the T money, then that's 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 the test right there. Yes. And, and he, I didn't never see him. He fucked everybody up. You know, I got a story. Can I get? I yes, hear I'm gonna, I'm gonna get start. Uh, what was crazy when I that was the first thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand when I moved to L.A., I was working security on the movie sets. I was. I was filing papers as a veteran administration. I, this is after the NFL. Right. Because I went broke. Yeah. And basically was trying to find my way, but I knew I wanted to be in entertainment somehow. Never thought I was going to be in front of the camera. Wow. I was start trying to get behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine invited me to an audition. First thing I ever auditioned for was Battle Dome. And I went in there. And, I, you know, and the thing is, when you're hungry, see, yeah, at boy. the time, I, I had two this. daughters. I got yeah. five now. Uh, oh, five man. kids total now, but two daughters. And I said, this is my way to make money, right? Yeah. So I went into the audition with my face painted. I had all this stuff. I had this Star Trek outfit on. People <laughs> were laughing at me. They were like, ha, ha, look at this fool. He look crazy. And I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> yup. And all of a sudden, but you know what the thing was? That got me noticed. Yes, boy. That, that was the noticed. thing. Everybody yeah. was like, "Okay, we gonna get, we gonna get, you." I made the show. I got the show. I became this this warrior from Detroit. T money, yep. had gold chains, the whole thing. I had a posse. That's was right. Yep. And, this other yep. brother. And, and the thing was, you know, I didn't want people. I knew I could psych people out. So what I did is the contestants would come in. They would meet all the other warriors. But I would hide. Yep. They would never meet me. Until it came out. Right, right. Until I up. came out on the set. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't want to catch me back there with my kids. See, right, right, I didn't want right. I didn't want them to know anything. So I and I knew the first time they see me, they in the middle of the lights, the hot light, the camera, the giant door open, I'll come out, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And it was like boy. <laughs> they thought it was a game show. Yeah. They were like, hey, hey, man. Wait uh, a minute. <laughs> what? One day, I told this cat. We had this game and we was hit me with these sticks and I was like, I'm gonna take this stick and I'm gonna shove it up their ass and I'm gonna make all day suckers out of every last one of these motherfuckers. Hey. They was like, cut, <laughs> cut, Terry, you yeah. can't, Terry, you can't use that. We ain't ready for yeah. that. Right? <laughs> was like, I was like, man, I was all in. And I, but I was so mean. Yeah. It was so wild because we even had it hooked up with my boys. I slapped one of my boys. We had a plan. I said, man, I'm going to slap you. Uh -huh. But we got to do it for the team. <laughs> and he was like, OK. In the middle of the show, I was like, <laughs> and people were like, he's slapping his own people. <laughs> that's how crazy, that's how yes. far I yes. was willing to go. Yes. So people thought it was real. Yeah. And people was like, this, this nigga is crazy. Like, for real, like, you don't know team money. And then what happened is after the show, only after the show, and when all them cats got all they People was getting hurt. They was on their yep. way to the hospital. And, yep. But I would come up and say, hey, man, thank you. Yeah. On the show. yeah. It was like, huh, huh. Yeah, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. I was like, thank you for being on the show. Yeah. It's all good. Because it's, it's what it is. You yep. know what I mean? I, I, and I knew this was my way. And that lesson right there, I've been using in every role I've ever done is to go far. Let's go as far as yep. I can. Take it to the Take edge. it to believability. Because yeah. my job as an actor is to tell the truth. Yep. That's my job. Yep. And the thing was is that it changed my life, man, because I had to face a lot of fears myself. Right. What's so crazy is that I was just as scared as they were. Because mm -hmm. anything could happen. Well, the damn show didn't look like No, you got to sell it. You <laughs> yeah, got to sell it. Right. I, know, I learned that from the NFL. You that's just you right. walk in, you just, you, hey, look, jump in. Let's go. That's right. And that's don't true. be afraid, even if you, even, and the thing is, it's, Having fear is 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 gonna happen. Uh -huh. But doing it in spite of that's the fear, it. That's the key that's right the key. there. 
Damn. You know what I mean? You, I hope you motherfuckers heard. <laughs> you gonna be scared. It's, it's, it, I mean, fear gonna come to every motherfucking body. Yeah. But what you do when that fucking fear hits your ass, that's right. what counts right there, baby. Look that fear in the face. That's right. Today, I'm gonna kick your ass. You gotta go. T-Money! What made it so, okay, he says, you know, it, it, it was definitely a show, but T-Money was a fucking athlete. Crazy. Definitely. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. A real athlete. He came from the NFL. Okay, yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about the NFL. Wow, well, I went to Western Michigan University. I walked on there, earned a scholarship. Wow. Coming out of Flint, Michigan. Yeah. I'm from Flint, uh, basically just like Compton. Right. Uh, in a lot of ways. And, but that was my way out of Flint, Michigan. I knew football was going to be my thing. I knew athletics was going to give me a chance to get out. Right. And that's a lot of, a lot of guys play basketball, yes. a lot of guys play football, a lot of track stars. We had, we had a lot of guys, Glenn Rice, uh, Carl Banks, oh, man, Andre yeah. Risen, yeah. all from Flint. Right. And uh, that was our way out. Yeah. So uh, after my four years of playing over at Western Michigan, I was drafted in the 11th round by the Los Angeles Rams. This is back when they were in Orange yeah. County. Mm -hmm. This is back when uh, Jim Everett was the quarterback and wow. you know, uh, Kevin Green and all these linebackers and the whole thing. Now, 11th round, they don't even have 11th round. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the whole thing was, I was basically a glorified free agent. Mm -hmm. But I told myself, I ain't going home. Right. I'm not going home because I had no choice. What was I gonna do, go back to Flint? Dang. So we had all these cats from Notre Dame, Michigan, SC, and I was hitting them in the mouth. Ooh! I would never, never stop. It was that practice squad, you know, cat that just wouldn't quit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? People was like, Terry, slow down. You, we, also, we just practiced it. I was like, ain't no practice for me. <laughs> I, know I only got thing. one day here. Yep. Like, every day is my last day. That's I didn't know it. when they were going to send me home. Yep. And what was crazy is that I did get cut. Mm. And I remember sitting there like I did. I gave everything, everything I had. Everything I had, yeah. But then the coach called me back. He said, we're going to put you on the practice squad because you just gave everything you yes. had. We need you. Right. And then two games later, one guy got hurt and I got moved up. Oh, man. And got in the league. And I was official. So, you know, you, even when you think it's over. Yep. It ain't over. It ain't over. You know too. what I'm saying? It ain't over. <laughs> and, that, and so I played seven years in the NFL. Rams, Packers, Chargers, Redskins, Eagles. I never quit. Dang. What would happen is, you know, I, I wasn't a star, but I was a special team. And one of my highlights, man, I got knocked out on Monday Night Football. What? It was, uh, I was on the Chargers. We were playing the Colts. And this is back when you had to kick off and you was on the wedge. Yeah, yeah. And you just had to sell out. Yeah. I sold out. Yeah. <laughs> That's when it cashed out. Like, hey, and all that money is gone. I was laid out face down, got up. Where am I? And, back, and this is back in the day when you went back in. You know, yeah, now yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, the concussions and all that. Yeah. But I was gone. Yeah. Let me tell you, and it was the best feeling I ever felt in my life. Oh. I didn't feel no pain. I'd never been high, never been drunk, and it was gone. Like, boom, lights out, good night. And I got up, went, looked at, you know, I'm playing the Colts, and I'm looking at the helmets, and I'm like, man, hey, y'all, what, what does the you mean? <laughs> what does the you mean? Are we in Utica? What was yeah. it? They said, no, that's the coach. Hey, man, this dude got something wrong with him. <laughs> I was like, what is the you all about? I said, man. Then they said, punt team. And I said, I'm on the punt team, but damn, I don't know what to do. I said, what's a punt? <laughs> and it was, now, that was scary. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I knew I was going to lose my job. Right. And I, but I didn't know what a punt was. And I was like, oh, oh. And they was like, hey, Terry, come on, look. Take some smelling salts, the whole thing. And finally, my memory started coming back, played the rest of the game. Damn. That was the rest. That's how my experience was in the league. I would play a year, get cut, sit out, work out, come back, play again, come back, get cut, sit out. I even played in Germany in the World Football League. Damn. In between the Chargers and the Redskins, I played in the NFL-sponsored World League. Yeah. I played in Dusseldorf, Germany for the Rhine Fire. Came back, was one of the few guys to make it. I just wasn't, listen, I wasn't smart enough to quit. Dang. You know what I mean? If I was too smart, I'd be like, I'm too. But I just said, I want, I, this is my dream. I want to make it happen. Now, you know, uh, I knew it was the reason that I related to Terry Crews so well. It, to, too ignorant to quit. That's me, boy. <laughs> you can scribe me to a T. <laughs> so many times uh, throughout my career that, you know, and what I do is not 
the NFL. We ain't got no professional power. We didn't have no professional power with this league. So it was bad. I mean, I did, you know, uh, when I would compete back then, it was, oh, you know, only, I would be the only black guy in the competition a lot of times. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, but I wanted to uh, represent, I was not athletic enough to, to be in the NFL. I guess this, this man is a fucking athlete, not just a, a weightlifter and muscles and shit all over the place. A lot of guys you see uh, got TV muscles. They look pretty good on TV and in the movies, but in person, they don't look so hot. This motherfucker looks better. <laughs> he looked better in person. They ain't doing the goddamn uh, movies and, and uh, t- uh, Hollywood. If any of you motherfuckers ever see this, listen. What do he got to do? He have any role that you give Terry Crews, he plays the fuck out of it. <laughs> He can be funny, he can be serious, he can be dramatic. When I look at the, the Marvel, and I love these fucking uh, superhero movies. Yeah. I love them. Why in the fuck did you motherfucker? is you motherfuckers crazy? Yeah. <laughs> huh? But you know what, I, let me tell you about, about that. I got a theory about that. It's kind of like a theory. And, and, and the thing is, is that I'm not missing nothing. First of all. Right. Look, Terry Crews is doing just fine. Every fucking thing. I'm yeah. doing fine. I got more jobs yeah. than I can handle. It's all good. But sometimes when you put a guy like me in a movie like that and the hero is Superman, yeah. I look like I whoop Superman's ass. Hey, and, and we you know, listen, Wait, wait, <laughs> but the thing is, you, it's a question of believability. Yes. Because if Superman's whooping me up, people kind of go, Oh, that's bullshit. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Now, now look, look, I've been in movies. I did a movie a while back where I played the villain, and nobody believed that, I, that the yeah, guy would whip my the hero, ass. It yeah. was like, dude, even the director came back to me later. He mm-hmm. said, man, you should have been the hero. Yeah, of course. Because we tried to make it a villain, but nobody believed yeah. this guy. Little skinny one guy, come on, come on. He's been knocking me out. And, and yeah. I was like, oh, oh, oh. And it was like. Nah, that's some bullshit. It, like right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and see, now, now, just like after 9 11, after 9 11, that changed action movies forever. You never believe one man can save everybody anymore. Right. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. When you see the world go down like yeah. that, and where's the hero? Where's yeah. the superstar? Yeah. Where's the guy? Ain't, right. ain't happened. Right. So now, you're talking about believability when you're talking about movies and stuff. And I understand, you got to have somebody way better than me. If you want me to be the villain and whatever and all that stuff. So I do understand it. Uh, and if they do come at me, it's got to be perfectly right. Right. Because that's the, that's the dynamic that yeah. happens. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I love all those movies. Right. Every last one of them. I love Civil War. just came out. Yeah. Batman, Superman. I'm watching it. I'm there. But I also understand that they got they got to sell tickets. Right. There's a job that everybody has to do. And with... Ben Affleck whooped my ass? I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, what? Well, you know, uh, I met, uh, I got a chance to, to meet Ben on the set of the Batman Superman because I had a small role in that yeah. and shit got cut. Oh. It's laying on some cutting room floor <laughs> right now. But they say it's going to be in the director's uh, version. Of it. I, hope, I, hope, I hope it make it to the director's version. But anyway, I'm a comic book reading motherfucker. Me too. Me I too. read comic books, you know, since I was a little kid. It was the one of the few forms of entertainment that was allowable in my home and that that was only because you know i worked cut grass and paper routes or whatever and earn my little change yeah. and i go to the store and buy my own fucking comic book yeah the thing is mr cruz every i mean stan lee knew back then that muscles sold fucking comic books. that's right the the, the superhero was a muscular motherfucker. That's right. Aquaman and all the motherfuckers with Prince Namor, they was yoked. That's right. That's right. So when you pull off the Panthers, oops, did I say that? I ain't supposed to say that. The Panthers, <laughs> the Panthers, the Panthers costume, the Panthers supposed to be yoked. It's just as simple as fucking that, and I can believe that because in the goddamn comic book, Everybody that grew, grew up reading comic books, they see that the fucking heroes, when they pull their suit off, is yoked. Goddamn, they don't look like this. So I know that there's difficulty in finding right. a superhero 
that's yoked yeah. and can walk, talk, and chew bubble gum at the same fucking time. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you ain't got to listen to me, you probably won't. Yeah. I'm looking at the motherfucker right here. <laughs> Anything you ask me to do, Terry Crews can do. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank he can you, do sir. it. But I, I do want to say again, the actors, all of them, they're all my friends, they're wonderful guys. Again, these movies are amazing in what they do. Uh, but again, you know, I made a way for myself. Yeah. Because what you have to do is just do you yep. as best you can. And let me tell you what happened with that. I just became, I was doing myself, doing comedy, doing all this stuff. People was like, I ain't never seen a big dude do exactly. funny. When Friday hit, when yep. I when Ice Cube saw me, well, it was great, I gotta go before that. I was in training day as uh, an extra. Oh, okay. Extra, and the end, when you see Denzel on the street, like, you know, yeah, gang yeah, yeah, yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm standing right out there in front of his face. I'm that dude <laughs> right there. If you go back and look, I'm standing <laughs> okay. right there in the jungle, right there looking at Denzel like, what, what, yeah, what? Yeah. Like the whole time. And a lot of people, I ruined that movie for people. They're like, that's the nigga from everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that nigga from White Chick. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so, but the thing is, by going extreme as far as I can, Sly saw me. There you go. Sylvester Stallone was like, look, man, we gonna put you in this movie, which yeah. was the whole expendable uh -huh. Let me tell you something. That right there was a dream come true. Yes. Because for me to not have an action franchise, literally coming from comedy yep. and jumping in with Arnold, yep. Sly, Bruce Willis, Randy go to a Dolph yes. Lundgren, yep. all these, I mean, I mean, Mel Gibson, and we did three, yes. three expendable series. I am known worldwide yes. because of that. And let me tell you, that's why I say I'm not missing nothing. No. Everybody know we already superheroes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm already have a franchise. Right. Yeah. And it's okay. Hail Caesar. <laughs> my character. Everybody knows what's up. So again, and I have to say, I'm not missing anything. Yes. But when the right thing comes, yeah. you know Ready. I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> Ready to be the mother. You know I'm gonna kill Ready it. Ready as fuck. You know I'm gonna kill it. I've been waiting fucking 40 years and I'm ready. I don't give a fuck they call me tomorrow. I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you look. Hey, yeah. now, I got, I got, CT, I just got to tell you, man. First of all, what an inspiration you are to a world of, see, I came up like you. I saw, I saw you on YouTube and I said, who is this? <laughs> who is this brother? Like, and I had to do the research because I said, man. Why? I said, I got to know this guy. Then you start working out with, with people that I knew and all this stuff. And I said, man, I got I to gotta find out more about this dude. Then I go on my iTunes and I ordered a movie. I bought it. I said, man, C.T. Fletcher, my magnificent obsession. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, I got to see this, right? Listen, man, I was riveted. I couldn't move. I couldn't move because our backgrounds, are so similar and the passion and the fire I said my friend, this is my brother I said man I said this is my brother right here I don't even know what else to say and I said I watched this stuff and I saw the background with your dad with your father um, you know the religion the the stuff that you had to overcome the abuse the people counting you out the stuff that you had to fight the, 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 you know, the fact that you're coming up in Compton, <laughs> which is a whole nother thing. I mean, I grew up in that same environment right. where it's, it can be crabs in a bucket. Yeah. And you got to constantly, you can't aim, you can't aim for the, for the, for the bull, bullseye. You got to aim above it. Yep. And hopefully you can, yeah. now you can hit it. There you go. And I watched you, man. And then I'm about the, the, you having a heart attack and the whole thing, and your, your whole desire was for more, man. Was for more, and I said, I'm a, I couldn't get more inspired. I, I <laughs> said, dude, I would I, I, I was ready to just run around. And finally, after my workout, I remember just putting an Instagram post, and I quoted you that you know that you have to be obsessed. Yeah. And I'm obsessed. Yeah. Oh. I'm obsessed with everything I do. And my wife was like, Do you have to take it that far? I'm like, Yeah. 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 I ain't got no fucking choice. You ain't got no choice. <laughs> And that's how I feel. I mean, I, I, and you are the example 
of perseverance, of stick to of patience, of, of just fire. And let me tell you something, man. You have no idea. I, I don't think you even realize how the world has changed because you were here. And I'm trying to tell you, and I want to tell you that from the highest heights of Hollywood all the way down to that little kid coming up in Compton and Flint, dude, you changing lives. You changing lives. Woo! I ain't ready for that one. But that you. that is, uh, man. Now you, now you, rarely do you see my ass speechless, but that fucking, that left me uh, pretty speechless right there. Um, it's the truth. Now, <clears throat> what you guys don't realize, and I, I didn't know until today, I found out through talking to Terry that our upbringings are very similar. And uh, it's uh, to, to come through, I mean, you can tell people that have gone through something. I mean, a lot of people learn, uh, uh, you know, call themselves experts in some given field, but they never actually been through nothing. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they read a bunch of textbooks and they fucking, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an expert because I studied this shit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, people that are experts on childbirth, ain't never had no kids. <laughs> That's true. There's people That's true. That are experts. Uh, you know, on every every fucking subject that you can think of. Well, my expert boxer ain't never been in the ring. Yep. He ain't never been hit in the fucking face. Yep. But they're a goddamn expert on how to do it. Yep. I find that fucking ridiculous, is. ludicrous, and a pile of bullshit. I agree. You got to fucking go through something. Terry Crews would not be Terry Crews if he hadn't gone through something. That's right. Now, our upbringing, like I said, is similar, and I want people, they don't know, I want people, because I didn't know, and I consider myself a Terry Crews fucking expert. Like I said, back from T-Money days, 17 years ago, I've been following this. So I want the, you to tell them your, some of your childhood and how you came up. You know, my earliest memory, my earliest memory is my father knocking my mother out. You don't, you don't forget that. No. Uh, it's not riding a bike. It's not, you know, going to a park. It's not. It's sitting there watching the strongest, biggest man I could ever imagine swinging and hitting her in the face, and her falling out. And now you gotta understand what happens to a little boy. <laughs> a little boy at that moment, when you see that happen, you want to run in and protect him. But you like this dude is too big. Yep. And so you don't know what to do, because you know he can wipe you out with one, with, you, you, you one swing in his hand, you yep. don't exist. Yes. Because he knocked her out. Yes. So you're in this little, little thing where you like, okay, what can I do? I can't do nothing. And you feel helpless. Now, the dangerous part of being a young man and feeling helpless is that it makes you, it makes you desperate it makes you, you go, you literally lose like any sense of what to do. Like you literally are like, uh, like you ever see a dog get beat down to the point where the dog just, it won't even, you tell it to come in, it won't even do yeah. nothing. It just, it just sits there like I just take it. It's called learn helplessness. Yeah. Learn helplessness. And so I said, okay, and then I had a plan. I went literally at my little young age, I said, I gotta be strong. I gotta be strong to protect my family. Because nobody is gonna do is gonna do my mother like that again. But he over the years he kept doing it. We come home, we were scared to death. Man, we, the stories about you hear the earth, you hear the yep. car pull up, he's like, man, what are we gonna do? Oh yep. man, yep. you know, he mad, what we, what, 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 you know, it was all good until he comes home. Yep. And then all of a sudden it's just disaster. Yep. You know, the arguments, the fights, the this. Now, my father was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. My mother was addicted to religion. <sighs> now you got two problems. What a combination. Yo, <laughs> that's a caustic mix right yes, there. That's, that's like nitroglycerin and yeah, dynamite. That's a combination I have. I couldn't do anything. Yeah. First of all, we go to church nonstop. Always in church. Yeah. Nonstop. Always every day. 
No, at the prayer meeting, the revivals, <laughs> the whole thing. You turn around, you're in, in church. Then you turn around, and I couldn't play for sports. It was illegal. Yep. I couldn't go to the movies. Yep. I couldn't dance. Yep. I could not uh, listen to music. Everything I do right now. Yep. <laughs> Everything that became my life, I could not do. So I knew I had to change, and I knew it was on me. You, you guys can't relate to what Teddy said, but I'm going to tell you something right now. In my home, I, I, I relate to this so well. Everything was a sin. Yep, everything. 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 When you told the story about that letter falling out of yeah, your pocket, yeah, I you was like, man, I mean, no, no, I, I'll never forget yeah. it. Because that was the way the church was, yes. man. I, you, you, they kept you in fear yep. the whole time. You never felt settled. Yep. Everything was scared. You scared of this, scared of that. We going to hell. Rap's about to oh come every God. five minutes. Yeah, you like if you get caught doing something, you 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 go on. You yeah. go to hell. You like every, and you like man. How can you live like this? Yes, with that pressure, with that yes. stuff, man. I went, but when I discovered working out, and I went in that gym, I was about thirteen. Man, and I was like, oh, yep, I'm getting stronger. What a relief! I noticed myself changing. Yep, I noticed all the pressure. Everything I could just focus and be in that gym and focus. And I, I said, "Man, I'm in this thing." And we had, I mean, it was like three different things, like a bench press. They had a thing called a leaper. It wasn't even a squat machine. It was kind of like something you just jumped yeah. up and down. On. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was in the ghetto, right? right? We had a place called Burston Field House, and it was right down in the hood. And man, I stayed in there and two dumbbells and just kept doing it. Yeah, I ordered. I'm the kid at the, at, that, at the end of the comic books. They had that. Are you tired of getting kicked sand kicked in your face? Uh, yeah. I ordered that book. Charles Atlas. I ordered <laughs> yeah. that book. Yeah. Yeah. Pictures of Frank Zane yeah, yeah, doing yeah. his thing and all that. Yeah. And I said, man, yeah. I ordered those books. Yeah. I ordered Bruce Lee books about dynamic tension. Oh, and I used man. to sit in my basement and make myself cramp up. I'd be sitting there to the point where I'm like, ah, I'm cramping. And my, my, my mother would be like, what the hell? What are you doing? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Because I knew I wanted to be strong. Yes. And that desire just kept fueling and it kept, but I knew that was, it was empowering me. Yeah. It was the strength. It was what I wanted because I could control myself. I could control my life because I wanted it to be mine because it always felt like everybody else's. Yeah. With my father, with my mother, with all this stuff happening, I said, I got to take control. That's the only thing I could take control of. That's right. It was, it's amazing, man. Our, our histories is just too when, similar. When I say that my psychologist is on the end of a 45 pound bar, that's right. Terry Crews understand what the fuck I'm talking about. I got it. You go in there and you can take all of that and put it out and weights don't give a fuck. I mean, hey, hey, abuse me, use me. <laughs> yes. And uh, you know, that was my plan, going in and abuse and use them. And I had, he had the, the, the goal of you know protecting his mom. Yeah. Okay, I, I also had the same goal, and also I, and on top of that, I wanted to destroy my father at the same fucking time. So I was going there gym with them two missions in mind: yeah. protect my mother, make sure she never got uh, hit again. And I, I've seen my dad, and, what, and I thought he was fucking Superman on Earth, yeah. reach back and slap you know slap knock my mom out with just like he did with it. With, and you don't forget that. Like I told you, I told you uh, earlier when we were talking that I'm 57 now and I still sometimes wake up punching and swinging and shit, yeah. still trying to defend my mom or defend myself. Yes. And, and you, you just cannot erase that. Yes. You know, even though I, I say the only, it was killing me, Terry, the, 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 the hatred and, uh, you know, I just, it was eating me up a lot. It yeah. was eating me up. So, it was, I had to finally come to a place, you know, that where I could forgive him and, and you know, and try to uh, move past it because it was killing me. Yeah. You know, they, they just eat me up, man. I got a story for you. Now, this is going to blow your mind. I done battle dome, been some, played in the NFL, been successful. I took my whole family back from L.A. to Flint. We call this Christmas from hell. I brought them back. I told my father, and my girls were smaller then. They grown now. Uh, but this was around probably 2000, maybe 99, 2000. 
I said, hey, I said, don't act up. I said, my kids don't know nothing about any violence. They don't know nothing. I've never hit their mother. We've been married 27 years to this, this year. I said, I've never, ever touched their mom. I said, they don't know anything about it. they never seen it. Mm -hmm. So do not get drunk and do not act up. Oh, man, I know. I, I understand. Just come on back. So we leave the kids with my, my parents, my mother, father, and we go out with some friends that we know, and we headed to Detroit, and we're going to have a good time. I get a phone call. He said, Terry, your father hit your mom. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just had this conversation. Just had this fucking conversation, man. Yeah. What are you doing? I got on the phone. I said, OK, get everybody at the house. Get everybody out the house. I'm a grown ass man now. Now I'm a grown ass man. I'm not five anymore. I already know what's up. Get everybody out the house. Take them over to our aunt's house. I said, my brother was in town. I said, man, I called him up. I said, we going to get him tonight. Tonight. We get to the house. Mom, first of all, I told my mom to go. He knocked her two sideways. Sideways. I'm sitting there looking at her face. Her tooth is sideways. It's okay, Ma, go over to Aunt's house. He's sitting in the bedroom, like, ain't nothing happening. I said, so what's going on? Uh, nothing, nothing. I said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you not to act up? Didn't I tell you? CT. Grown ass man now. I hit him. I, we then my brother came in. Bam! We beat his ass, CT. Now let me tell you something. This is the thing. Now this is what I want everybody to get. I didn't feel better. Mm. I didn't feel better. Mm. It didn't yeah. work. Yeah. He's on the ground, pleading for his life. Literally. Yeah. Please, please stop. And I'm just sitting there. It didn't work. I thought that was all yep. I needed to do yep. was beat his ass. And I sat down on the bed and I just started crying, man. I was just like, it didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. And I said, and I thought, if I could just, if I could just make you feel what everybody else felt, then you would understand and now everybody's cool. Then it would, it would clean me up. But it didn't, CT. It didn't. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. I thought I would feel better. I felt worse. Because the thing is, with all this stuff, with all this shit, you have to rise above. I wasn't rising above. Yeah. I went down with him. Yeah. I went to his level. This yeah. is why gang members, when you shoot back, now you just like right everybody else. With right with him. You right, right there him. with him. There's a right moment that I had to choose to rise above, but I didn't. And I beat his ass. And it was it didn't change nothing. My mom went right back to him because she was trained right in that way. Now she just passed away two days before Thanksgiving last year. And I'm telling you, let me tell you the, the, the healing that took place, though. A few years later, this was years later, I would say probably seven, eight years, I had an epiphany. And it came to me and it said, what's so crazy, you have to understand and you have to find things to be thankful for. Hmm. Okay? You have to find, because this is where your energy comes from. All energy comes from gratitude. Ooh. Everything. If you look at a glass half full and you go, man, that's all that is, you ain't got no energy. Right. But if you look at a glass and you go, man, I got boy, we got half a glass of water. <laughs> all of a sudden, you can make things work. Yep. I said, let me try this on, I gotta try this with my family. I said, I gotta think of one thing to be thankful for him. And I said, I wouldn't be here without him. Yeah. That's all I, that's, that's the only thing I could think about, CT. And I said, okay, 
I called him up. I said, you know what? And we call him Big Terry. His name's Terry Cruz, too. I said, Big Terry, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you're my father because without you, I wouldn't be here. This man started crying. Ooh. This man started saying, I'm sorry, Terry. Oh, I'm God. sorry for everything I did to you. I wasn't right. I'm sorry. You know what? Where the punches, I thought the punches were going to work. And they didn't. He got harder. Yeah. But when I said, man, I'm thankful for you, it broke him. Broke him. I flew to Michigan. And I hugged him. Didn't want to, didn't feel it, but I said, I gotta do this for me. Because I gotta heal, because I'm, I'm going down. Like, if, yeah, you don't, yeah. if you don't heal it, it's gonna come out in other ways, man. It's gonna come out up. in other ways. Yes. You will act up. Yes. You, you, that's, you, all that stuff, when you're young, man, I'm 48 years old, I'm a grown man. And I realized, yo, yo, you got, I, I had to let that shit go. Yep. It or you, it's gonna eat you up from a lie. You. It eat you alive. Destroy you. I hugged him. He hugged me back. And I said, you know what? I realized that I need you. I needed you to be my father, or I wouldn't exist. And if I could choose my parents, I choose you because I'm here. Man, the best healing ever. And before my mom passed away, and again, my father's still here. And there are things we don't really get along a lot. Like you said, it's, it's, to, it's best I'm way over here sometimes. And, and our interactions are very short, which is good. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm good. Yeah. I'm free. I'm here. Man. I tried it both ways. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's the story. I didn't mean to be long with it, but man, that is so I wanted you to hear it. And this is why your film, it, it resonated with me, man. It resonated like you wouldn't believe, man. When you talked about the, your mom's passing and the funeral and how he, he the things he said, man, I, I, I'm there with you. Yeah. I'm there with you, bro. Yeah, we, oh man. Uh, I'm 57, and I believe that I'm, I'm still waiting on, uh, you know, that I was wrong. It would do so much good if I could just hear that old man say, before he dies, or I die, I may beat him, I, I'm living on borrowed time right now, to say that I was wrong. But he's uh, 87, and I ain't heard I was wrong yet. And uh, I think it's the reason why I still wake up sometimes swinging and punching, and, and uh, you know, I still haven't got that. I do my very best to move on. <laughs> and uh, Terry, I gotta tell you, man, during the, the part of uh, the story where you socked the shit out of him. Yeah. I, I, I had my, I had my uh, good goddamn it moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, my okay. God. Cause you know, you I got one. I, oh yeah. Yeah, I, I you know, I, but what did it for me or what allowed me to uh, relieve some of the pressure in my pressure cookers, I was a fucking ticking time bomb yep. like yourself. Yep. And you know, just, any kind of little shit would set, you know, set me up. I, mean, I didn't even know, you know, exactly. Yeah, you don't even understand yeah, it. Yeah, and uh, like I said, my dad was a Korean War veteran, and they, they call it PTSD now. Yeah. Yeah. But it, uh, back then, they just called it shell shock because he was, uh, he, he was in the war at 16 years old. So he went in the war to, to escape an abusive stepfather. So he thought going to war would be better alternative than that. You know, I don't know whole lot about the story because he never he talked about it. Wow. But now, you know, the last time I seen my father, he was in a uh, VA uh, mental war. Uh, be, and he's, you know, I, we went to see him and he's still saluting and standing guard duty and every wow. fucking thing else wow. at 87 years old. And uh, it's hard uh, for me to, to feel sorry for him 
I, I uh, you know, I, I still, like you said, in small doses, you know, I, I see my dad, I used to see him on Christmas and his birthday. I would go by and see him on Christmas and his birthday for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And that's about as, as much of, you know, as I could stand. Yeah. But what gave me such great relief uh, was to be able to look my dad in the face, you know, I, I, I wanted to destroy him just, you know, so I was cheering for that part, so I wanted to knock the shit out of him. But to, just to be able to look him, the big bad wolf, in the face, in the eyes, and tell the big bad wolf, I ain't scared of you. That's right. That's right. Oh my God. I know, because I, I gave, I tried to give him many opportunities throughout the years to, to say that, to say, you know, I was wrong, I'm sorry. I tried to give him that opportunity that would I just straight out say, hey, I want you to apologize, to just admit you was wrong. Cause, but they ain't never been wrong about shit. As long as I know they never been wrong about nothing mm -hmm. in his whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't never seen that's a perfect motherfucker right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> it, it, he's a million and old. His wow. record is perfect. Never wow. been wrong about nothing in his whole life. Wow. So I give him opportunities along the way, you know, I say, you know, Dad, you know, you, you made me feel real bad. When I was a kid, I felt helpless. I felt like I couldn't do nothing. I felt, you know, I, t I just told him and, and hoping that he would say, you know what, son, I was wrong, you know, and, and Terry, that would have done everything. That would have erased all of that shit. And I could, you know, get on and, 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 and I, cause I want to, you know, I, I want to, you know, I, a lot of people, a lot of kids, they talk about, you know, how hard it is growing up without a dad in the home. <laughs> It was so many times that I wish I didn't have no motherfucking dad. Listen, I, you know, I tell kids that. I'm like, you know what? You don't want, a lot of times, yeah. you better off. Yeah, yeah. You better off yeah, without that know, Negro yeah, yeah. sitting That's around right. here. I'm That's trying right. to tell you. That's you right. know what I mean? Know. I would, believe me, I was like, I told my mama, leave him. Yes. Leave him. Times. I said, let's pack. Let's go. Many times. Many oh. times. But my mom was the same way, same way you described it. Uh, uh, I remember when my dad broke my nose and we went to the, the <sighs> hospital. In the emergency room, the police told me, so you know, we could have him arrested and we could go to his job. And I'm like, fuck yes. Arrest that motherfucker. Take yeah. him, you know, take and my mom was like, you know, hey, that's your dad. You know, you can't and I was like, What? Yeah. Yeah, look, I'm still I'm sh dude, unacceptable. What? But she was trained. Yeah. That's yeah. the way she I don't care what he did, she was dead. She was right there for him. And my dad used to always say a lot of times, I raised her. Talking about my mother. I raised crazy. my mother. It's crazy. And I was like, man, that's, that's your psychotic. wife. That's psychotic. Yeah. That's psychotic. That's your wife, dude. Like, what do you mean you raised her? Oh, so I relate so well to your story. And we have so much in common, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Um, so wait, I got I got some prepared questions here, and I never <laughs> we went off. Questions. We, we went, went off. off. We, we went off. off. That's and, all right, uh, though. I like this, man. This is what I'm talking. about. Pet peeves. Yeah. Does Terry Crews have any pet peeves? Yeah. You know what? I have a pet peeve. Out of shape trainers. Ooh, man. <laughs> oh man, bro. When you see somebody come in, and I, I know, I know. Look, that's me. I, I'm sorry. I gotta put it on blast. When I see somebody out of shape come up to me and be like, you know you're not, you need to bend down a little further on your ride. Uh, I'm like, what? wait a minute. Okay, first of all, you, if I want it to look like you, <laughs> I will do everything you say. Yeah. <laughs> but oh what the God. hell are you doing telling me what I need to do? I mean, guts, yeah. everything, Chuck, and can't run out of shape and walking around with the t-shirt, like, trainer. Train. And I said, man, who in the world? Listen, I, I got money managers. If my money manager was broke, he fired. Hell yeah. Okay, uh, you know, if, if, I'm just trying to tell you, it's one of those things where you got to be good at what you do before you can tell me what to do. I can't have an acting coach who ain't never done it. And like you said, you got so many, let me tell you something, so many people who ain't never been married trying to get marriage advice. So many people ain't got no kids trying to tell you what to do with your kids. Blah, blah, blah. And you can't tell me nothing if you ain't in shape. Motherfucker, I ain't listening to you. <laughs> that's not Simple that's the that. biggest pet peeve oh of all God. time. And then that same guy, he have his, whoever believed him and paying him, 
they start working on four or five different pieces of equipment, and you sitting there waiting for this fat dude with his client. And I'm like, he taking up half the gym and giving all the wrong advice. I said, man, that's why I go real early. I go real early, so I don't even have to encounter. They don't come in until like nine, ten o'clock. <laughs> uh, Terry Crews just put your ass on black. <laughs> And I have said that shit so many motherfuckers. It's so many goddamn internet experts. Oh. And goddamn, you look at their profile picture, or go to their page, and they look fucked. Terrible. Ain't got a muscle nowhere on your bitch made body. Listen. But and But oh, goddamn, a, a wealth of knowledge. But you know what? This is the thing. People don't understand. What people don't understand is that education is not. It, it, it does, it, it does, it's not your books. It doesn't mean books. Education is what you learn as you go. Ooh, that's education. Ooh. But what happens is people go to school and you know, we're all about school. School yeah, is wonderful and, and I, I don't want to knock school. School is an awesome, I awesome agree. thing. College is great, but it's so funny because I got a daughter, she graduated NYU and she's like, you know, Dad, I, I, I'm a real actress. Like, I study. <laughs> I have done plays and theater. And I'm like, well, what pay for that? <laughs> I bet you I got $100,000. You run around in New York City. I said, but white chicks pay for that. Mm. All my little silly Friday pay for that. Free money. I'm trying to tell you. Come on, try to tell me. Like, well, you know, Dad, I think your technique needs to be. Oh, whoa, 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 honey. Honey, honey. Slow down. Let's slow it all down. <laughs> Some guy been come out of school trying to tell you what to, and I said, like, hey man, it's amazing how school got these cats tricked. They oh got them tricked. God. I said, man, you they can go all the books. You like, blah, 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 and you ain't got, and you sit, put your ass out there in the fire mm. and don't know what to do. Mm. And it literally like, what do I do now? What do I do now? Uh-uh, no, oh, no, no, no. You learn that on the fly. You Damn. learn that by being broke. Oh, and you I learn how it. to deal with your money. Mm. You learn that, but you got to put that weight on on your back, and then that squat will get a little bit better. Yeah, <laughs> but you can you can study the technique all day Gotta and look at it. it blah, 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 but until you put that weight on your back, mm. now you get it. You know all the fucking biomechanics, and all the goddamn <laughs> macros, and every motherfucking thing. But somehow, yet pet you peeve. still look like a fucking turd. That's my that's my pet peeve. That bothers the fuck out of oh, me. Oh, I can't. I, it hurts. It hurts to watch. Sometimes I literally have to just step out sometimes. Yeah. And you see them instructing people oh and, they, my and, God. They, and they just, uh, oh. And what bothers me worse than, almost worse than that motherfucker is the motherfucker that believed that motherfucker. I know, I know. My how, I know. God damn it, how gullible can your motherfucking ass? Look at this motherfucker. First of all, I don't want to, I don't want to put nobody on blast, but again, if, what happens is you got a nation. If a nation follows somebody who looks like Richard Simmons, you get a nation full of people who look like Richard Simmons. So you get what you're looking for. Now, I love Richard. Richard's yeah. a good guy. Do his thing. But I'm just saying, do I want to look like Richard Simmons? No. Uh, no. No, I don't. No, I don't. And the thing is, your trainer needs to be somebody you want to look like. Dang. That's it. Pet P. Simple as Done. Man. <laughs> the, mic, the mic is dropped. Damn, walk the fuck off the right stage. <laughs> <laughs> now, first thing I told Terry when I seen him is, you are always in fucking shape. I have never seen Terry Crews out of shape. Me, oh, that's a different story. <laughs> Sometimes you may look at me and I may be smooth as your grandma's ass. <laughs> But Terry Crews is always in fucking shape. That is dedication. It, it, it takes something. Yes. He, I know he travels a lot. I travel a lot. And I know he travels way the fuck more than me. And he still stay in fucking shape. That is hard to fucking do for unmotivated motherfuckers. Unmotivated motherfuckers kind of piss me off. <laughs> yeah. They ain't got no drive. Ain't got no goal, ain't no direct, ain't no nothing. Just, I, you know, I can barely get up today, CT, because my fingernail polish is still wet. I don't want to hear no damn shit like that. Dude. Yeah. That shit bothers me. Yeah. But how do you stay in fucking shape 24-7? You know, uh, I had an epiphany. There, there was a time when I, when I left the NFL, I got depressed. 
there's a there's a thing about there's a transition that has to happen. This is why you see this is where you see lots of basketball players when they retire they gain like they go yeah yeah four hundred pounds. Yep. Football players are worse. Yeah. They just man you don't even know what they look yeah, like. They had exactly. a helmet on. That that big brother he was in the NFL yep. for twenty years. You know yep. what I mean? Uh, my thing was I was depressed because you don't know what you're gonna do now. You're like what do I do now? The train. I, listen, I went to the gym. It was so funny because I said, I told the gym, I said, hey, I'm going to work out here. They was like, okay, that'll be $25 a month. Yeah. I said, 25 I ain't never paid to work out yeah. in my life. I yeah. said, 25 No, I'm telling you, I'm going to work out here. Yeah. They said, yeah, and that'll be $25. And I was like, huh? $25? Oh. And then I realized, oh, damn. The world, the world pays to yeah. work out. Because I never paid. Right. You know, you have to right. athlete. You get right. up, you got somebody to tell you when to eat, when to sleep, when to work out, when to go here, yep. when to go that. See, and this is the thing. Discipline is not real discipline unless it's self-discipline. Mm. And that's the thing. And discipline is not punishment. Discipline is training. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. But I was on their thing. And I felt like, okay, you know, uh, since they're not there to tell me what to do, what do I do? And I realized I was not disciplined. I thought I was disciplined because yeah. you was in the NFL. Right. Of course I'm disciplined. People right. think all pro stars are disciplined. They're not. Yeah. This is why in their personal life, it's crazy. Yeah. But then you go into, you know, all this stuff, you see the stories and all this, and it's like, what happened? You think these guys are so disciplined, but they're not. It's yeah. not real. No. Self-discipline. That's it, baby. It's when you wake up. And, and let me tell you, the thing about self-discipline, the first thing you have to do for me, I the first thing that changed for me, because I got out of shape when I was depressed. I was about 25, 30 pounds overweight. I had a gut. My wife walked up behind me and she pinched my back fat. Oh! See, see, see. And she went, hey, honey, she didn't so go for cute. The I was like, oh, oh, oh! oh. I was like, whoa, 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 what you doing? Now, in your mind, you still in shape. Yeah. You know, you're like, you oh, no, oh, man, my chest is bigger now, you know, but the guts is yeah. bigger too. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, and my wife pinched my back fat. I said, hey, 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 what, you, what did you just do? <laughs> listen, man, listen, she was like, honey, I think it's cute. It's oh, I said, there ain't nothing cute oh, about that shit. Mm. Ain't nothing cute about that. Don't, don't touch my back. Don't you touch my back. <laughs> listen, don't grab me there. She messed me up, man. Wait, wait. And it hit me because I wasn't seeing the things that was really there. And I said, I'm out of shape. Yeah. And then what I had to do, the first thing you have to get rid of for self-discipline, you have to get rid of self-pity. Mm. Wait, wait a minute. Listen, wait a minute. Listen. Wait a minute. I got a sign right here. <laughs> Fuck pity. Yo, where is it? Oh, you got a sign? I got, I got one right Look at that. Look. There it is. Right there on the wall, buddy. See that old that lady? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, no, no. Fuck pity. The first thing you have to do is get rid of self-pity because self-pity, it's like, man, I'm not this and I want, oh man, you can feel good. Self-pity feels good. You wallow in it. Oh man. You sit in it you, and you ain't working out in it. Yeah. You ain't no. doing nothing in it. You no. go and lay down. You know what? I'm just going to take another. I'm just going to go back to bed. You set the clock, wake up, feel self-pity, go back to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And so I, got, I said, you know what? I can't feel sorry for myself. I said, I have to be thankful. You have, you have an opportunity to keep going. And so what I did, TT, and this was hard, I said, for 21 days, I'm going to go to the gym, no matter what. Now, it was hard because I was just fighting it. Yeah. I, the first day I went, I walked in the gym, looked around, and walked right back out. And I said, there, yeah, I did it. Yeah. That's day one. Day two, I walked in, looked around, got on the recumbent bike, Went home. Day three, though, I was like, let me get on these weights a little bit. Okay. Okay. Half an hour. Got out. Let me tell you something. That literally turned into 21 straight years yeah. of oh, what I do right yeah. now. Wow. I never stop. Yeah. Never stop. Yeah. Don't start. You see, there's a problem with everybody doing. They start comparing themselves to everybody else. Yep. They go, they go to the gym and they try to put four or five on the bench press and you ain't worked out in 10 years. You go in there and you worked and you you blown up. Yeah. You done hurt yourself. You, you can't go back in. Yep. You fucked up. You, yeah. You got to start where you are. Yep. That's it. Don't try to do nobody else's shit. Do your shit. Yes. 
and that, you will be oh fine. God. That, that's a big <laughs> fucking statement. I try to tell these empty headed motherfuckers this shit all the time. <laughs> I know you do. When I came back from open heart surgery, uh, my first goal was to just walk around my block under my own state. Mm. Six times champion of the whole wide world. Mm. And my goal was to make it around the block under my own steam, Terry. And, you know, but first, that, like you said, I had to make up my mind to do something. Yes. I could lay yes. there in self pity yes. and wallow in it. And it's very easy, it very easy to say, you know what? I just don't feel like it today. Yeah. And, and look, it's a valid excuse. Yeah. Because you don't. Yeah. Just, you feel like, hey, let me tell you, excuses is like a, it's like a table full of food. You never run out. That's it. You never run out. <laughs> excuses just keep Endless coming. You supply. can just eat them up like mom. Endless supply. I see it. <laughs> Fuck the excuses. That's it. It's so easy. It's so easy. To make excuses. But once you say, wait a minute, it's me. That's it. It's me. I'm going to yeah. take what I got. It may not be what it used to be. I may not be the champion of the world no more, but I'm going to take what the fuck I got. That's right. I'm going to take my punk ass over there to that gym and yep. give what I got. CT. They talk about me. They say, oh, man, CT walk like Frankenstein. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I got arthritis in my feet so bad I can't even bend my toes, see? but I slide. I fucking slide my fucking ass to the gym. No excuses. No fucking excuses. Mm -hmm. And I keep fucking going. None. And I'm going to keep going until they throw dirt on top of my motherfucking ass. That's it. That's Just it. simple as that. That's it. Because I'd have made up my motherfucking mind. Thank you. <laughs> and that, look, right here, too. You Hell gonna, yeah. You ain't going to never see Terry Crews out of shape. Never. never. I know I ain't never seen him out of shape. This is probably even more so. I, I got to ask you this. Talk to me. I got family members that I ain't never even fucking heard of contacting me. That's right. Distant third, fourth cousin we moved and shit. Yep. Hey, cuz, I didn't even know I fucking they existed yep. until a couple people see me on YouTube. Yep. Now I know that you gotta have fucking family members that get on your goddamn nerve. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet now, I know. I know oh, oh, Terry Ted got he got money just hanging. He got he probably a uh, fucking bed spread made out of thousand dollar bills. That's yeah. Terry. Let, oh. let, let me call Uncle Terry up. Let me call yeah. my cousin Terry up. Yeah. Now that shit bothers the fuck out of me. Yeah. On, 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 on my little old level. Yeah. So, I, did you ever experience anything like that? Oh, man. Um, yes. Uh, there's a lot of family members that I had to keep, you know, at arm's length. Uh, at a plane flight length, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, and my number. This is the thing. This is this is the trick, and this is the trick that I. It took me a while to get. You think you have to pick up the phone? You think you have to pick up a phone ring? Oh man, hey, 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 oh hey, <laughs> oh hot water heater broke. Oh okay, uh, all right, and everything. Oh, oh, your car messed up. I had I had a family member who literally said, "Man, look, I can't go to work." I can't go to work, man. My car, my car is all messed up, man. I can't go to work. I can't feed my family. I said, oh, man, I'm on the set. I'm running out at lunchtime, running to Western Union. Okay, like, look, look, man. Okay, it's, it's there. It's there. It's there for you. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you, man. Look, man, God bless you, brother. Yeah. God bless you. <laughs> I, and I don't think nothing else of it. Call him back. Three months later, man, how's the car working out, man? I said, well, only thing you gotta do, you gotta buy a car cash. So I'm gonna give you the money, but buy a car cash. Yeah. Oh, oh, that? Oh no, you know we we decided to wait and buy it on time so we could get a better. Nigga, <laughs> wait, you just had me running off set, yeah. flying around. You yep. couldn't go to work. How'd you get to work? Yeah. How did you just get to work, yep. nigga? Yeah. <laughs> I said, you fool, you tricked me. Yes. And listen, this is the other thing. What, what happens is, everybody's laughing and joking, and then you walk in the house, as soon as you walk in, everybody's like, oh man, oh, it ain't that yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, if I could just, 
Ooh, I can just pay that water bill, man. And I said, like, wait a minute, I heard y'all laughing outside. Yeah, everything. Now when I walk in, it's a funeral? Yeah. Cause, Cause no one will tell you it's going good. Oh no. No one would ever, oh man, look, man, I just like these doctor bills, oh they I was like, wait a minute. Everything fine, Terry. Is it anything I can do for you? <laughs> no, listen, no, you don't I, get I, that I don't hear that. Kind of fucking I call. did not hear that. You don't get that kind of call. I did not hear that. Is it anything you need, oh, Terry? No, no. Is it anything I can do for you? No. You okay? No. And I'm just calling to see if you are alright. Listen, listen. I know. You don't what get I this discover. fucking kind of call. No, never! And what this I discovered, and now listen, this is not, this is so. My wife is so smart, and my wife's sitting there the whole time like, I told you. See, I, <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. This is the thing that that men get into. Men, we kind of want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. See, I had to realize that I kind of wanted to be. Yeah, I take care of this, take care of y'all. I'm rich. I got this, this, until that shit start backfiring, yeah. and you you like stop because don't man, stop. No. And you realize, wait a minute, man, you got cash, you pay. I said, I can't pay for all y'all. Yes. You can walk in and everybody behind you, like, hey, man, y'all gotta, <laughs> y'all gotta pay for y'all tickets. Somebody gotta. You know, pay everybody at dinner, pay. like, pick them up. <laughs> that bill come. <laughs> you know, I'm like, man, is none of y'all gonna reach for this sucker. Like, can we get seven checks up in this book? No, <laughs> it ain't no seven checks. It's one big one, and they like, they, literally, they point like, there you go, right there. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. So I, I had to realize. My wife was like, Terry, you're doing too much. You're always doing too much. And I said, yeah, but, I, you know, that's my family. And then, and then she was like, Terry, they ain't learning. They ain't gonna <laughs> never learn. You gotta set boundaries. You gotta set boundaries. And there's a way to get everything. I said, these people, if, listen, first of all, you want some money from Terry Crews? Start a business. Mm. Start your own business. Show me, you put your money in, you get three lawnmowers to start, start mowing shit. <laughs> okay, mm. I buy the fourth one. There you go. You need a fourth lawnmower, I got you. There you go. And that's when I said, okay, yeah. you, what you doing? What are you doing? You wanna sell ties on, on, on the street? You wanna do that thing? Okay, check it out. I'll buy the box that you sell the ties out of. Mm. How that? Now, you building careers. Yep. You building self-esteem. I said, man, when you start putting money in people's hands, they're like, yep, thanks, thanks. And that's it. Bye, yeah. thanks. They ain't learn nothing. Your ass got to do something. Dude, and then I changed my number. Oh, That was amazing. Let me tell you something. Man, the phone didn't ring no more. It was like, yeah. why did I do that? It was so simple. Long time. See, T, it was so damn simple, <laughs> man. I was like, I changed the number, and I was like, is something wrong with it? Like, I literally was like, I thought something was wrong with the phone. I was like, oh yeah, I changed the number. Man. They don't know it. Yes. And then I hired an assistant, and I had an assistant. I said, okay, all y'all got requests, go to him. You know what? And they know how silly that shit look. Mm. They wouldn't call it. Yeah. They wouldn't call it. They called the fuck and out of hey, I need, I need $500 for But they wasn't going to call my assistant and be yeah. like, I need five. Tell them, I, uh, you know what? Forget it. Yeah. Because <laughs> they know it looks stupid. Yeah. It look, my, my sister's like, he, because he don't care. Yeah, no, he don't He ain't got no fuck. interest. Exactly. And he like, mm, hey, yep. uh huh, okay. Yep, yep. And now, if it's really serious, yeah. if something's happening, now yeah. I can assess right. a real need. I'll bring it to Mr. Cruz. You know what I'm saying? The earthquake hit, the roof fell in. Okay, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? So that's how I've been dealing with that. And it's man. really a lifesaver, man. man. Change your number. Change your number. Ooh. Change that number, y'all. I'm gonna change that motherfucker so bad. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we may have answered this, but I'm gonna ask anyway because I've seen uh, Ted Cruz in a lot of different shit. And uh, as you guys are well aware, I like to use profanity a little bit uh. in my uh, videos and whatnot. I like to say fuck every now and then. <laughs> It's really, you know, against my policy to use profanity, but you know, I, I'll, you know, go against my wishes yeah, and go it. ahead on. <laughs> now, how do you? Because I don't hear uh, very much, you know, when I look at a Terry Crews video or some, or, t or even the, a little bit TV show or something, but I don't hear Terry Crews saying "fuck" or, or "motherfucker." Or, now, it depends on what movie you watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. 
listen, listen, you know what? And I, I, I have, I have no problem cussing. I have no problem because sometimes that's the only way you describe it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay? Yeah. It's like, hey, sometimes you gotta be like, man, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand that. Hey, look, he said that like he might have had some practice. Oh, no, 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 I'm trying to tell you. When I come, to, hey, look, motherfucker. Yeah. Now, I will go quick on somebody because I know where I'm from. I, I grew up with it. But this is what I understood. If I wanted to branch out. Yep. If I wanted to expand the empire, you got to speak more than one language. Exactly. I and I could, when I knew I had to host, mm -hmm. and I was like, hello, everybody. Welcome yeah. to yeah. the new world's funniest fail. Hello. You yeah. know, and I had to, I was hosting Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hey, how you doing? Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You can't be, hey, welcome to this fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be a motherfucking millionaire? Yeah, no, you <laughs> can't do you it. You can't. And the thing is, I knew, I knew that, you know, it turns some people off. Exactly. And it's okay. Yeah. But in the right circles, it's perfectly appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, it's one of those things that, it's one of those, these words, when I say, man, you can't put up with that shit. Yeah. It, I mean it. I'm yeah. not saying it. But at the same time, I'm out for, I please my fans. Right. I please the world. Yeah. When you go, you can't be in another country speaking out of turn and you you basically are representing everybody in your circle, everybody who brought you there. Everybody. Right. And my thing is always to be the best representative of whoever is bringing me in a place or taking me a place. I represent my family. I represent right. my wife. I represent right. my kids. Uh, and I know what I'm about, but yep. I'm telling you this, man. Look, for one, that's you. Mm -hmm. and, and I never, I don't want to come out, I'm like cussing, I'm out of here. What, what is that? <laughs> because sometimes, man, that's the best way to do it, man. You do, and I love the fact that CT, you are you. This is why I came in your world. Yeah. I'm that's in right. your house. That's right. I'm yeah. wearing your shirt. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. here the rules is what? Fuck excuses. We cuss over here. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm okay with you. Yeah. Listen, you, let me tell you something. And I understand why. I understand why. And let me tell you, man, I get you, I understand it, and I don't have a problem. And I have kids that I, it's so funny because my, my son will be like, man, oh, you said a bad word. I'm like, yeah, you will too. Yeah. yeah don't worry. I said, I know you say it. I yeah, just, oh, my, yeah. my kids yeah. try to act oh. like it. I said, look, if you're thinking it, you, it's the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if you come up to me and be like, oh, I said, you cussing in your head. Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. like, watch that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's all good. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, like I said, Terry, whatever situation you put him in, wherever if he, he would be as comfortable speaking on the White House Senate floor as he is in Congress. That's real. And that's that's why I say you can't put him in a role that he can't do. He's very very versatile. I have been asked, you know, to do certain things, Terry. To, I have uh, been asked to endorse certain products that I wouldn't do because the product was bullshit. Right, right. And then, oh, you, you, your grandkids will make money, they'll be well off, I can't do it yep. because it's bullshit. Yep, yep. Certain things I, I you know, I don't, I don't even want to fit into every motherfucking thing. That's right. It's uh, only, uh, I appeal to a certain uh, segment or, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty broad range, you mm -hmm. know? Real popular in Russia. I never thought I'd be awesome. popular. Awesome. I saw it. But uh, I never tried to fit in or conform to, you know, a, a certain set of rules. And it, it, it has cost me. It's cost me, you know, even uh, I'm a soldier. I'm an ex-veteran, uh, right? Mm -hmm. I got out in 1980. Um, and I am not welcome on a lot now, of, not all, but a lot of military installations don't want me to come because of the way I speak or my language. I, I can definitely talk without cussing. Right, right. I can do it. I know. No problem. No, I know that. But I learned a lot of the way that I speak in my training style from the military. Right, right. My drill sergeant called me every fucking thing under the sun. Yep. Yep. I still remember some of that shit he called me. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of it. So to be denied access 
to some of these bases because of where I was really a slap in my fucking face. Yep. I'm like, wait a minute. I learned this shit from you motherfuckers. Yep. You know what? You kind of have to look at it like religion. Because even the military, even sports has been a, a lot of religion kind of oh. aspect. Where the same thing, they like, like in the NFL, they tell you, go all out. You take his head off. And then you turn around, and now you on a commercial, and you gotta be okay, be Mr. Nice Guy, yeah. Man, huh? What? Huh? These cats don't know how to act. Yeah. I mean, dude, every year you got a cat going to prison for life. Yeah. You know what I mean? These guys are yeah. gangsters. Yeah. I'm trying to tell. I told people, hey, the NFL's jail with money. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, you go to the hardest prison. You ain't gonna find niggas harder than the NFL. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what the thing is, and yeah. it's like they try to take you out. Yeah. That whole thing is they try to take your head off. Yes. That. that. And, and now you want me to come out here and be nice guy? Yeah. So a lot of people have a hard time. Yeah. And same thing with the military. It's like, okay, you can be, but then be nice. And they're like, wait a minute. You just taught me. Wait, yeah, wait, yeah. wait, where do I go? You know, they balancing on yeah. the tightrope. You taught me how to be a motherfucking killer. Yeah. Now you're going to be a goddamn pussy cat. You see what I mean? And it's a, a lot of times when you talk about even with religion, they sit back and tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, but they doing it. Ooh. And they doing it. Ooh! So let me tell you something, CT. You are refreshing. Oh my god. Because man. you are you. You you know what the only guy I know that's more that, that's just like you is like Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, oh, yeah. he says what he thinks. Yeah. He yeah. say he gonna say it. Yeah. You say what's in your heart. Exactly. And I can trust you. Yeah. Because yeah. I know you're gonna be real with me, man. And I tell everybody, I listen, I ain't fake with nobody. You get what you get. Me, Terry Cruz, is who I am. You know what I mean? That's what I, I ain't gotta fake nobody. I, you don't see me with an entourage. I didn't walk out uh -huh. here with nobody. Cause I, I ain't scared of nobody. Hey. I've been to Compton, but I've been to Russia. I've, I mean, I've been to, to Bulgaria. I've been all over the world. I've been to Brazil. I've been over there. And I don't need, I know I can handle myself anywhere I go. I go with the white people, I go with the black people. Yep. I'm bilingual. Look, <laughs> uh, and I can attest to that. He could have showed up with 15 motherfuckers and bodyguards and shit and what. Ted Cruz stepped up into the valley of the beast by his goddamn self. That's right. That say something right there. That's right. That's a real motherfucker right there. A lot of you motherfuckers, you are, oh, I, I'm going go over there, but I gotta have, I gotta have this person work, I gotta have. If this is where you come from, you don't need all that I, shit. Listen, I know this. I know Compton. I know, I know the cats that live here. We, this it, is what it is. And you, as you see, uh, we got a, a basic, Little, a lot of our machines got rips and shit in the upholstery. This is, but this is the kind of environment it's beautiful. that I came up in. You know, this kind of gym, you know, we, it was, wasn't even this nice. It's beautiful. Like you said, you had three pieces of equipment. Yeah. We had a bench press and some dumbbells and, and shit at Claude McDonald's. Uh, it was underprivileged kids would go there. That's why I, I, st I started out in my backyard. Mm -hmm. But then we graduated and went to Claude McDonald's, you know, where the underprivileged kids, the kids went to. And uh, the Crips leader at that time, uh, Tookie, yep. was, uh, he was, you know, like the person everybody looked up to. And he yep. was from the neighborhood. And Tookie and the Crips would come over to the youth center and close the motherfucker down. Yep. So we, we got through, you know, our workout was over when them motherfuckers yeah. <laughs> They trying to put the dumbbells and shit back. They took it in the crypts and shit. Yep. So uh, that's you know that's the environment that I grew up in. And I knew that uh, when you came here, it would be like home. You know, yeah. some people it, some people can't work out unless the uh, equipment is brand new yep. and, and polished and everything looks good and, and uh, carpeted and, and uh, magnolia trees and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I might put them on. <laughs> you know, they can't, but uh, anyway, let's see. Is there any, oh, okay. Is there any role that Terry Crews would not play just on principle? I'm not going to do this. I refuse to play this part. You know, you, you won't see me uh, basically disrespecting women. Mm. Now, uh, and what I mean by this is, is that I will play a bad guy who does that, but he's got to, He's got to get his comeuppance. Okay. You understand what I mean? Yes, now, I this is what I mean. There's a lot of movies where, you know, you know, guys want to be, okay, I'm naked in the bed with this girl, and then, and then they just walk away, and it's like, aha, cool, super fly, whatever. You ain't going to never see Terry Crews do that. Mm. Never. 
because for one, you know, I know how smart women are. I know how valuable women are. I have four daughters. Right. Uh, my wife is the most valuable person on earth to me. Okay. And the thing is, is that I know how hurtful that is when you treat women as less than human. Right. And a lot of times when you're talking about the masculinity of our world, which is a, a lifting and football and, and sports and this kind of thing, they tend to devalue women. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you this, I was guilty of that. Mm. I was guilty. I felt I was more valuable than my wife and kids because I was a man. Because it's, hey, it's my work. This is what I do. You say, you do what I say, my way or the highway, all that stuff. And then the shit was like, all of a sudden, when she's like, I'm out. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Well, no, that's not my way. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. No, not the highway. Wait, no, wait, no. Wait. I, you just said highway. Yeah. I said, wait a minute. And I realized I needed to change. I needed to change as a human being. Because you got you gotta understand the culture teaches men that they're better. That you that you're more valuable as a person, as a human being, than a woman. Mm. And so anything that puts that out there. I won't be a part of. Uh, and again, I have no problem playing a bad guy. It's like, and I, I, the best example of this is Training Day. Denzel would not do that movie unless you killed him. Mm. He said, he said, there's no way, there's ain't gonna be no sequels. You can't make me this bad dude and all of a sudden it ends like that because that's not the truth. Right. As a, as, if you live like that, you getting yours. Yeah. That's just the only way, and, and that's what I want Everything you see me in, even if I was a bad guy, even if I was this and that, you got to see the truth. And I'm not here to tell people that you can go off and do all this kind of stuff and live and, and live a great life. You right. can't be Scarface mm. and not get killed. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. All those movies, you can't, uh, you, the guy is, he's the winner and all that. That ain't the truth. They lying to you. Yeah. They yeah. lying to you. And my job as an as a actor is to tell the truth. And anything, if I play a bad guy, like what was so great about even Friday After Next? With me and Cat Williams in the bathroom. Yeah. The whole thing. And I'm trying to get in. Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's one of Sam's favorite movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, Friday After Next is still one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I'll do it again. I yeah. can't wait. If they do another Friday, I'd be in it in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is that the fact is, I got my comeuppance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I could be as bad as I wanted to be. Definitely. And I was like, hey, Nick, man, man, look at this nigga right here. That nigga right there. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> you know? I, knew, I knew cats like yeah, that, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And I was, they was like, man, wait a minute. That's a little scary. <laughs> For years, people was like, they really like that. You know? I do. You can't even act like that. You know what I mean? So that, that was a, it was a badge of honor. Yeah. But the thing is, scared men, what was funny is the women was in the theater laughing. Dudes was like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Boy, this is a horror movie. Yeah. And so when when Cat got me back and took the pliers and, yeah. ah, and yeah. the whole deal, and he was slapping me. We was in that thing, and he was in that in the bathroom. He was slapping me for real. <laughs> and I'm a boy, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff is real. Yeah. Because you can't, let me tell you, I don't care how little that guy is. How small he is, he gonna get you. Yeah. You can't mess with his wife, you can't mess no. with his family, you can't mess no. with him and not expect something to come Some all on you. Some kind of consequences. Some <laughs> sort of consequences. So <laughs> yeah. that's the roles I love. Yeah. Because in the end, and it was funny. It was, oh uh, my it was, God. It, it was, was changing yeah. the game. Everybody thought that third Friday, well, it was just going to be And it turned out to be one of the best yeah. ones over the exactly. years. Yeah. Exactly. And the cat favorite. went on, the superstardom, and I went on. And, yeah. and it, was a, it was a blessing. And uh, but those are the roles that I say, man, let me be bad. Because I this is the thing I like. The, I like playing the fact that I could be scary and funny at the same time. Oh man. That's 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 a rare movement. Like it ain't I, it like goofy, ha ha ha, but all of a sudden it's like, wait, what you say? Yeah. And they go, oh no, I'm just, no, it's okay, man. <laughs> you know, hey, I love playing that, man. That takes fucking talent. I love playing that. Everybody it. can't do that shit. Everybody no, no, because everybody ain't scared. But everybody I can play can't that. Everybody can do that shit. 
All right, let me let me see what else I got here. I know we been long. This is good. This is, <laughs> I'm like telling my life story up here, man. This is crazy. You, uh, any brothers and sisters? Yes, I do. I have an older brother and a younger sister. Oh, um, okay. Are you uh, guys close? Yes, we are. Yes, right. we are. My brother's in Atlanta, and uh, my sister's a judge in Detroit. Oh man! Yeah, she, you know, she's achieving. She's doing you guys her thing. hear that? Very proud. She's probably locked me up. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, we talked a lot, and we're about to go into the workout portion. Mr. Cruz, as long as we're doing this interview, and as long as we, he's Mr. Cruz, when we start to lift weights, he's gonna be a motherfucker just like every goddamn guy. <laughs> yes, I am. And I think I, I think it's gonna be okay with him. I Let's think go. Mr. Cruz is gonna be all right with that. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, Terry Crews stepped up in here without any type of entourage whatsoever. Terry Crews is the real deal. Now we're finna find out just how crazy Terry Crews is. As I told my mom when I was 12 years old, she told me, she said, son, I don't care how bad you are, there's always somebody out there just a little bit better than you was, right? And I said, Mama, that sound real good. It's a whole lot of bad people. But somebody got to be the baddest. <laughs> so it's a, it's a long line of bad motherfuckers. Somebody got to be standing at the end of that fucking line. Mama, I love you, but that's me. Ted Cruz is here. Mama, somebody got to be the bad. Me and Terry Crews finna get out. We finna find out who's the baddest guy there. Let's go. Terry Crews versus C.T. Fletcher. Let's go. In the Valley of the Beats. Stay tuned, motherfuckers. Here we go. Beast! <laughs>